Hey, I've got a few more Just Franco Blu-rays and DVDs from my collection I want to show you and uh, I've got a film from the 60s, one from the 70s and one from the 80s. First up is Savkibus. It's from 1967-1968. It's a German-Portuguese production and it's one of the most beloved and acclaimed Jess Franco films uh, starring Janine, Janine Reynaud, Jack Taylor and Howard Vernon. What I've got here it's it's this German DVD image quality is rubbish, it's uh, from a very dodgy master but the interesting thing about it is this DVD is um, it differs from the Blue Underground DVD it's a shorter version, there are some trims but there are also substantial differences in, in dialogue since it was a German co-production it's uh, some of it was shot in, in West Berlin and there are some uh, German and Austrian actors uh, involved in this film, such as Adrian Hoffen, who used to be a star in uh, Heimat films in the 50s. And he ended up uh, making his own films as producer and director, and he was also an occasional actor for Rainer Wendorf Husbander in such films as World on the Wire, for example. Succubus uh, stars Janine Reynaud as this intriguing figure. She's this fascinating uh, woman who's, it's not quite clear, she's got a sort of a memory loss situation. She's a sort of a half person, half ghost. She, she seems to drift in and out of uh, encounters with strangers. Some are in Berlin, some are in Lisbon, Portugal. It's very dreamy, very incoherent and it's pure just Franco. Janine Reynaud, that's her iconic role. Uh, she's done a few interesting uh, films uh, around that time, some of them for just Franco, and then she was also in a couple of films by José Benazaraf, I think, the uh, Paris filmmaker. There is a wonderful supporting part for Howard Vernon here in Succubus. Jack Taylor is also on board in Succubus. That's probably his meatiest and uh, again, probably coolest role uh, out of uh, a dozen films he's uh, made with Jess Franco. For a 1960s film, uh, Succubus is quite hot, but by today's standards, it's super tame. I would say it's uh, very accessible. It's it's not a film that can disturb anyone really. It's not one of the grindhouse films uh, Jess Franco uh, is uh, famous for or infamous for. The score is by Friedrich Gulda. It's an excellent uh, period jazz score and there are some also additional cues which are a bit more jarring and may, may have been uh, by some other uh, composer. It's quite a lavish production by just Franco standards. There are some uh, good um, production values on display and this uh, the film has this nice international uh, ambience with some uh, recognizable spots in, in West Berlin and Lisbon. It's a great introduction to the Jess Franco universe because a lot of the elements dear to him are already there, such as random uh, quotes and uh, borrowings from other films, books, uh, whatnot. Deliberately shallow and superficial uh, story with no uh, pretense at, at any kind of psychology, so it's all there already. And there is also this um, interest in fetish king. I reckon Jess Franco might have also taken from comic books he used to enjoy. The beauty of Succubus uh, lies in how well it uh, jumps from scene to scene, which are between themselves almost unconnected, without breaking the spell. So this dream equality, which uh, a lot of uh, Jess Franco fans uh, enjoy so much is really, really potent and present in Succubus. I would recommend if, if you're new to Jess Franco, try and get hold of the Blue Underground uh, DVD of this film. It's the most complete version with excellent image uh, and sound quality for a DVD format. If you happen to speak German, then try and hunt this version down because there are some fascinating differences. I'm not going to list them because there are quite a few but some of the dialogue is uh, substantially different and some of the narration is different and even perhaps scene order is slightly different in this German edit compared to the US version. I thought the German dialogue was a little bit more specific in, in some parts. 
you have to watch it at least once. It may be a little bit too tame and old-fashioned for some, but I personally think it's a, it's an essential viewing. Just Franco Succubus original title was meant to be Green Eyes of Satan. It never materialized, and Just Franco also used to refer to this film as Necronomicon, even though there are no explicit uh, references to H.P. Lovecraft in the film. Next up is a movie from the 1970s. It's a French production by uh, Robert Denel, if I'm not mistaken, by the producer of Demons and uh, Dracula Prisoner of Frankenstein. I'm talking about uh, Obscene Mirror, also known as The Other Side of the Mirror. I've got this uh, French uh, DVD here. It's uh, the best edition around for the moment of this film, containing uh, two cuts of the film. One is the original uh, version, and then there is the Eurocena version, which was uh, spliced up with uh, some uh, more erotic material, and it eliminated a lot of the plot and made the film just different. It was also rescored, so the French erotic version is called uh, The Obscene Mirror, and the original Spanish version is uh, the other side of the mirror. The French version also adds Lina Romay. I've only watched this film once, which means I've seen the original cut and the, and the later French cut once, which is really, for Franco standards, that's not enough to be speaking about a movie at length, because some of the charms of Jess Franco films really um, show themselves once you have had the time to process and have given the film multiple chances. I can't... So I'm just going to briefly outline my impressions here. I really appreciated the lead actor's performance. I'm speaking about Emma Cohen here. She's on the poster. I believe she also won some sort of an award for her performance in this film, which is unusual. Just Franco films getting screened and getting awards. That's really quite... That's quite rare. The other side of the mirror is quite shoddy and low budget. If you were to contrast it with uh, with the previous film I mentioned with uh, Succubus, you would see there was there is a definite dip in production value. Everything is just a lot more improvised, a lot more just Franco in the sense that in, in the period, in the first half of the 70s, his uh, rate of production was exploding. He would be making more and more films per year. And this led to him cutting corners in each in every way possible. And some of that sloppiness is very visible in uh, in this film and the other side of the mirror. So if you're into pristine movies with uh, excellent production values and a well-preserved print and a coherent story, then definitely skip this film because it's very jazzy, it's very loose. Some of it might uh, remind you of uh, Cassavetes' movies of, you know, shadows, faces, where there is a lot of improv going on, but not that level of acting commitment. Yeah, I mean, this, this movie here, it's an erotic commercial movie, it's a thriller, and it's dubbed, so you, you can't really expect magnificent acting. However, for this genre, Emma Cohen is fantastic. There is also Howard Vernon in a tiny part. He doesn't get to do much at all, but he's present. It's always nice to see Howard Vernon pop up. There is also Paul Davis, this odd uh, blonde... Uh, I guess he was Bavarian, that actor. He's been in a few just Ranko films around that time. He is, as usual, super wooden. He just stands around, doesn't have a very convincing present presence. There is also Robert Woods, in a pretty cool role. There is Alice Arno, and who else comes back in this film? The actress from Attack of the Robots, from Cards on the Table. Françoise Brion comes back some years later, comes back to the Jess Franco family. It's really nice to see her again this time in a color film. It's a moody film, it's quite downbeat. I think The Other Side of the Mirror and Lorna the Exorcist are two films which are charged with such melancholy, with such sadness, I find them almost unbearable at times. They belie the general origins and they really channel something from, from a tormented soul, which makes them at the same time captivating and sometimes almost unbearably sad. Yes, they're cheap, yes, they are kind of throwaway movies, but there is definitely a personal touch there, which is why 
there is people on forums on facebook going on about just Ronko because he knew how to put his stamp even on otherwise uh, unremarkable products i guess i'm still myself quite new to this film uh obscene mirror aka the other side of the mirror on the whole it's definitely worth a look i'm really happy i hunted this film down i've got here also a movie from the 1980s this is a blu-ray from mondo macabro it's um night has a thousand desires is the current uh english language title and that's one of a bunch of films just Ronco made that year with almost the same actors there there were maybe eight nine maybe more films he made that year so they were all like on really rushed schedules with very very limited crew and cast the same faces popping up in different roles the same locations being recycled again and again some of the music being recycled again and again so you have to be already a little bit more experienced with just Franco to start enjoying the, these kind of uh, films which came in in early 80s from him because they are very hermetic and they reference and cross-reference some of his earlier films so it's like a hall of mirrors really if if you kind of recognize some of um, certain things popping up from earlier from just Franco's universe then it's fun. If you just see the film as a standalone product, it might look a little too minimalist, I guess, because there is it's scarce. There is lots of stretches of time where it's just one actor standing. There is some odd music playing. Then the camera zooms in a little bit on them. The camera wobbles. Maybe just Franco is playing with the focus, trying to you know catch focus on the person or deliberately slipping focus on something else. And you're just thinking, okay, oh, so this can be very unusual, very uh, maybe even off-putting if you are new to just Franco, because that's against the rules in normal films. Yeah, you don't just have one person sit on a couch and drink whiskey with uh, you know waves, ocean waves, and jazz music in the background. That's not enough apparently for most normal films. However, just Franco just rolls with it here, and there is also magnetic, magnificent. Lina Rumay here in one of her iconic roles, her role as Lorna. We heard that name in 1967 with Succubus Necronomicon. Now we're here like uh, almost 20 years later. It's a different actress now, Lina Rumay. Uh, it's very colorful. What I really like about this Blu-ray here is the colors. The sound is a little bit too filtered maybe. It sounds a bit rough, but for a film, for such a low budget film, that's not a complaint, it's just a fact. There were subtitles, it's in Spanish only. Those films were never dubbed for export as far as I know. So this is the Spanish only with the subtitles. It's a dreamy film. If, if you like trippy, atmospheric, semi-hallucinations, then this can be really enjoyable. Some days I find this is really, really a delightful film. Other days it's maddening, it's slow and plodding and I can tell they were just inventing things on the spot. But there are some scenes, even when I'm really not in the mood, I still find them amazing. Like when you see Lina Romay riding in the back of a cab, which is taking her to the next victim, I guess. Then Lina Romay in the shower and you see this uh, trickle of red liquid. It's I guess it's blood uh, sort of... Uh, down her leg and then it runs down her leg and into the drain it's just so beautifully captured then there are some nice panoramic views i'm not sure where the film was made maybe canary islands i don't remember off the top of my head there is plenty of atmosphere and there is some inventiveness when it comes to coming up with the scene with just a few props and one pretty location but without any real um, set dressing or without any any story you know it's it's a film where franco is just riffing on on the few things he's got and he's got like a few canisters of film and he's got a few actors and he's got like a very tight schedule so he's he turns inventive and this is for some of us this is franco at his best night has a thousand desires with lina romay and uh, jose jamas albino graziani a wonderful small scale film very very small but not to be ignored. So these are my Chess Ranko movies. I'll show you some more next time.